As you probably know, nowadays, flower pots are made by machines. But in the old days, they were all made by hand. And they would have been made on a potter's wheel because it's one of the quickest ways to reproduce or to produce flower pots very quickly. Nowadays, uh, potter's wheels are electric and they're much easier to use. And we also have special things like vats that we can use that um, are easy, make it easier to take the pot on and off the wheel head, which is the part that you throw it on. So I've got a masonite bat which I'm going to apply to the wheel head. I'm going to just moisten a bit, and that helps to keep the clay connected to the masonite bat. And I've already, I've already pre-wedged some clay. This is four pounds of clay that we're going to use to make a, a four pound flower pot. And the pot I'm going to make today is a full pot, very traditional shape, um, one that you're probably very familiar with seeing today. It's really the, the shape that the flower pot, even today, that we use that are machine made, that are based on. Um, and the dimensions of a, a full pot are about the same height as it is wide at the top. So about as tall as it is, the, as the opening is at the top. Four pounds of clay on the wheel head, or on the, the masonite bat, which we're going to just wet to lubricate. And then I need to center that clay. Right now it's not centered, so I need to get that clay into the center of the wheel and make it even so that the pot becomes even. It's very difficult to throw, in fact sometimes impossible if you have a, a lump of clay that isn't centered on the wheel. So a very important step in the process. Now that it's centered, I'm going to open up the pot. And I'm going to do that by pushing my thumbs down in the center of the pot. And because the pot is spinning, it's very easy to find the center of the clay and to find that opening. I'm going to push down to the bottom of the to the uh, bottom of the lump of clay towards the bat, but I'm not going to go all the way through because that would mean that there would be no floor to the pot. That said, I want to open it up a little bit and I want to take one finger and push it right down in the center all the way to the bat because that's going to provide me with a drain hole. That's going to be the drain hole for the flower pot. So that step is already done. Then I just like to open up the base of the flower pot and make the floor of the pot wider, more generous floor. and. With some trivial force, it always wants to bring the clay out, so I'd like to bring the clay back in occasionally. And this step is called a pull. And pulling the clay is really just um, pushing on the inside and the outside of the clay body to make the pot rise, to make it get taller. So a little bit of force on the inside, a little bit of force on the outside, and gently pull the pot up. And you can see how much height comes out of that. Just one pull. Of course, that's not as high as I want it to be, so I need to continue to do pulls until it gets to be the height that it should be in the end. And we have to do this slowly in stages because if you do it too fast, the clay will start to torque and almost pull apart. So we have to be somewhat gentle with the clay. And as you can see on the top, I've left a lump of clay, which will provide me with a rim. And rims are very important for flower pots because flower pots are very utilitarian. And that actually acts as a handle or a grip. So when you're moving the plant, which can sometimes be quite heavy, it provides you with something to grab onto for moving the plant and pot around. just about the height I want it to be, so I just want to open the pot a little bit and really define the rim. And then I just need to shape the walls of the pot, shape the side of the pot to make it more like a classic flower pot with that gentle 
V shape. And I do that by using a wooden bat, a wooden rib, excuse me. Just a piece of wood that helps me flatten, straighten, smooth, and shape the outside wall of the pot. Just need to tidy up the pot by cleaning the water out of the inside, cleaning off the bath. And because each step of the process takes time, the more you can do while it's on the wheel, the better it is, the less time it takes in the end. So I'm going to just use my rib to cut a small um, piece of clay out to create the beveled bottom edge. That's basically trimming the pot so I don't have to do that later. Cleaning up the wheel, and again, like I said, this pot should be just about as tall as it is wide, and indeed it is. So that's a classic four pound full pot, a very, very traditional flower pot uh, used for many centuries. Now this pot can come off the wheel and because I threw it on the bat, it can come off very easily so I can put it aside dry and trim up and uh, stamp and finish later.